after being wounded. Should That's very really nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most difficult thing during the war? Most difficult thing? Yeah. I'll tell you a story which I like to tell. I, I spoke to the last group. I, I suffer terribly from claustrophobia. Do you understand claustrophobia? Yeah. Yes. Claustrophobia? Okay. I have a horror of being underground, or I can't go in um, a, sensor, a lift, uh, ascensor. Uh, I can't go into the metro. I panic. And um, when I was training to be an officer, we had um, salt courses, you know, crossing the country, uh, rivers on wires and high walls to climb and uh, rivers to cross and everything. And one of the last things you had to do on an assault course was a long tunnel underground with turnings off to the left and to the right, which were blocked. No lights. You couldn't see the end of the tunnel, so it was completely dark. You had all your uniform on, a haversack, a gun, a steel helmet. It, and I had no intention of going underground. I couldn't do it. So the first cadets went down happily. Ha ha ha, that's easy. Well, imagine me in a tunnel. I'd turn to the left and it's a blank. Then you'd have to call back and try and find another way out. And panic, I would, I would have died. So when it came to my turn, the sergeant major had a, a board with our names on. He, my name is Milchrist. He said, Cadet Milchrist, down you go. <laughs> I said, Sergeant Major, I can't. He said, that is an order. Down you go. I said, Sergeant Major, I will never become an officer, and I never will go into that. I'm sorry, but I cannot go into that tunnel. He said, right, I shall write your name down, and you will never become an officer. You have refused an, an army order. At that moment, a captain arrived, said, to Sergeant Major, is there a problem? And he said, yes, Captain. This cadet has uh, disobeyed an order. And the captain said to me, what was your order? And I said, sir, the sergeant major told me to go under, like everybody else. I can't do it. And he said, do you suffer from claustrophobia? And I said, yes. He said, sergeant major, mark down. This cadet went into the tunnel, right, run across the top. <laughs> That's one of my happiest memories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a human being. Mm. If that officer hadn't had been supported the sergeant major, I probably would never have become an officer because I'd have refused an order. But he was a human being, I like to think a gentleman, and he saved me. And I ran across the top, and the sergeant major had to write down that I went in the tunnel. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yes. So, um... <laughs> I mean, there are so many things that happened. We'd sit here all day talking about them. So, we understood you were wounded. Would you mind talk, talking about uh, talking to us about it? I mean, how, where, when? No, I, I don't like talking about it, but I'll tell you. I was in a trench in Holland, uh, two miles south of Arnhem. The film you probably saw, Le Pont Trop Loin, the history of Arnhem. And we were blocked by the Germans. And I was in a trench, and I don't know. I suddenly lost consciousness, and I think a, a shell or a mortar bomb just close to my, it wasn't a trench, it was a foxhole, you know, about the size of this table, a hole in the ground, not, not a long trench. And um, a piece of shrapnel hit me in the back, and I, I was unconscious, I don't know what happened, I was evacuated, and I was in several hospitals in Nijmegen. Brussels, England, and eventually I recovered and I was um, fully restored to health after about six months. But it, it was lucky because, another story, after we crossed the Seine, uh, we were the first troops to cross the Seine. I was with my platoon and I was talking to my sergeant, who was a charming man, he was, I was 20 years old, he was 22, he was very helpful. He'd been in the army since he was 15, so he knew all about the army. He was a great help to me. And I was giving him orders where to put a Bren gun, a machine gun, where to put a mortar, where to dig a foxhole. 
and his head disappeared completely in a cloud of blood. And he was called Sergeant Langley. I was the target because the Germans were high up on the um, cliffs, going, leading down to the valley of the Seine. And a German soldier was in his trench, slit trench like me, with his weapon, which wasn't a fusee, he was firing a 20 millimeter gun. It's a shell. It, originally, it was an anti-aircraft gun. And he was using it like a rifle. It was normally mounted on a, on a carriage, you know, with the wheels and towed by a bit. How he did it, I don't know, because the kickback, you know, firing a 20 millimeter gun. And he was obviously aiming at me. He was a Tira elite a sniper. And I was the target, obviously. Had he gone one degree, it would have been my head who'd gone. Years later, I found and visit every year my sergeant's grave. He's buried in the cemetery, civilian cemetery, cemetery at Vermont. And every year I'm invited to celebrate the liberation of, um, I'm known as a liberator, I'm not. The free French had liberated this side of the river. Anyhow, um, I was lucky. Okay. Can you tell us uh, where you didn't want it on the... Um... Yeah. Ah, voilà. <laughs> Un crayon. That's the half, I presume. Yes. That's Rouen. Oh. Fernand. After the gap. That I think is Fernand. Uh, Brussels, that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did sort of a loop like this. Yeah, I know. Uh, we did two rivers. Yeah, there. That's Arnhem. Yeah, well, I was just short of Arnhem. Yeah, Graaf. At Elst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Pour leur faire plaisir, vous allez faire une signature. Daté. Avec la date. C'est la 7. Le 7 mars, oui. 7. Zéro trois, dix-sept. Dix-sept. C'est signé, David Ok. C'est signé. Allez. So, Thank you very much. Thank Who's you going much. to pay me for that <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, how and when were you taken care of How and when Yes. You, I was you taken care of Yes. Um, well, as I say, I don't remember when I was wounded. But I was unconscious, and I woke up in a field dressing station in Nijmegen, where I was kept for three or four days. I wasn't fit to travel, apparently. And then there was a, a special uh, Red Cross military train, which took all the wounded, all the seats were out. It was like a moving hospital, with some stretchers in each carriage. And we were, the train left Nijmegen in the evening. We got to Brussels late in the morning, and um, I was sent to a, a whole um, a hospital with a whole lot of soldiers, and after two or three days I was in bed, I was um, recovering, and I said to the sister, the nurse in charge, I said, um, sister, are there no officers here? And they said, oh yes, all the officers are in a clinic up the road, in a famous clinic. And um, they didn't believe that I was an officer because I had no papers with me or anything. And I moved from a hot or ghastly ward with about 50 moaning, groaning soldiers. I was transferred in an ambulance to a magnificent clinic in Brussels. 
and I was horrified because um, the, the officers were treated in a sort of first-class fashion, and the soldiers were in um, a horror sort of place, all lying together. So um, I, I didn't enjoy my stay in that hospital. And eventually, after about a week, or, oh no, ten days, um, I was flown to England by the Royal Air Force. And we arrived at an um, airport in uh, an RAF station in the south of England. We were then imported, carried in ambulances to local hospital. Every county has a big hospital. Like Caen has the CRSU. There's probably a big hospital here. Every town has a big hospital. And I was sent north of England to Derby Royal Infirmary, a hospital, where I was there for about six weeks. Then I was um, sent home on leave to recover. And I had three months holiday, if you like. It's not called a holiday in the army. Permission. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Leave, yeah, leave. How long did you take to recover from your injuries? Well, I was wounded on the 5th of October, I think, 5th or 6th of October, and I eventually rejoined the army in April or May the following year, in 1944, or 45. My great hope was to be back in Germany when the war ended, because having come from all the way across Normandy, Belgium, Holland, I, I wanted to be naturally in Germany when the war ended. And I was sitting in England, the south of England, waiting for a, a boat <coughs> to take me to Belgium, where I would have enjoy, uh, rejoined my regiment, my battalion, which were then at Bremen in, Hol in Germany, North Germany. And that was um, May, week May. So uh, from the 5th of June, 44, I was uh, recovering from being wounded until uh, earlier in '45, when I was still in England, waiting to go back to Germany. And my disappointment was, as I say, I wasn't in um, with my regiment in Bremen when the war ended. I was sitting in England. Okay. Nobody could understand. I used to come to breakfast in the officers' mess every morning. So, has the war ended yet? <laughs> No, 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 I said, oh, thank God for that. I might still get to Germany before the war ended, but I didn't succeed. And I wasn't pleased. <laughs> then I joined another regiment, and then I served in Germany, Austria, okay. Yugoslavia, Italy, Malta, Egypt, Palestine, which became Israel. I went to bed in Palestine, and I woke up in Israel without getting out of bed. So I asked the question now, how do you change countries without moving? Okay. Do you understand that? Palestine um, was Palestine. Yes. And in 1947, yes. 46, they beat the, the Arabs and the, and the new nation was created, which is now Israel. Yes. Before Israel, it, it was called Palestine, mm -hmm. which was shared with the Arabs and the... Uh, thank you very much. Not too much gin, I hope, again. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that was my um, brief history. Okay. Did you have a last question? Sorry to interrupt. A last question, maybe? No? Mm. No, I think it's good. Okay. No, no Perfect. No. Perfect timing. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you for thank your you questions. Much. I hope I, I answered sensibly, yes. I hope. Thank you very much. It was interesting. I mean, moving. Yeah. I thank you for asking the questions and being yes. interested. Thank you for answering our questions. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.